now can we focus on de novo RCC as a good portion of our patients will have de novo metastatic disease. Katie, your treatment paradigm here. Yeah, so, you know, a couple of years ago, the NCCN guidelines started to change how would you choose your frontline regimen that was based on IMDC categorization. Now, I'll actually bring it back full circle and say, now I feel like um, in the last year, given updated data from P1, CTLA-4, P Nevo, I still use IMDC to give prognostication to the patient, but I don't necessarily choose my um, frontline regimen based on IMDC alone. My algorithm is I'll go through and say, okay, well, what is the characteristics of this patient? And I, I do still use IMDC so that if a patient looks like they have poor risk disease, multiple risk factors that pretend to poor biology is informative to me and helps me advise the patient on prognostication. What it comes down to for me is, is this patient in some type of visceral crisis or such a high burden of disease and pain, for example, from bony mets, that I really don't um, have an opportunity to rescue with a TKI in that second line space. And so if that's the case, then I will absolutely choose from one of the three great IOTKI regimens that are approved in frontline. Um, 40 to 50% of my patients to novo metastatic disease, they're often presenting because they have pain from their cancer. And so I think that's probably the percentage of patients that I would be treating with an IOTKI. And then for the other, I will, um, I would like the data that came about just in the last year, which was the eight year survival data and what it showed us and what was maybe new this year, besides just continued durability from that PD-1 and CTLA-4 agent for the first time in this data, the intention to treat population had been the intermediate and poor risk. They allowed all patients to enroll on trial. So in this year's data, they did show that, there, again, there's a subset of patients with good risk IMDC criteria, kidney cancer patients who had a durable benefit. And often those are the patients who are not needing a response, maybe patients with small lung nodules who you've been observing for a while. And you have that opportunity to try a PD-1 and CTLA-4 agent. If you unfortunately don't get benefit, you would still have time to proceed with sequential CKI. So, um, that's that's why I say I kind of feel like it's come full circle while we were, you know, initially stratifying our treatments really based on IMDC. Um, now I feel like we need a biomarker, but right now I'm using patient symptoms to help drive my first life. Thanks for covering that, Katie. A lot to unpack here where we have, as you stated, dual checkpoint inhibitor approved along with TKI single agent, also uh, immunotherapy with TKI. Though the reliance on single agent TKI is rather low here, we tend to use dual checkpoint or IO plus TKI. Now, as you stated for bone or particularly liver, is there a one particular one that you rely on IO plus TKI? Yeah, these uh, trials have shown updated data, Checkmate 9 ER being the Nevo plus CABO data that was shown updated just um, a few weeks ago and continues to show that benefit even in these hard to treat areas like bone and liver. And I think similarly, we have seen that from the CLEAR trial, which was the pibrolizumab and lenvatinib treatment. So those are the more broader TKIs compared to exitinib, which is really a pure VEGF targeted. If we're looking at those um, treatment areas for patients, I often will go either to cabonevo or pibrolizumab. Katie, can I push a little more on the same idea? Out in the community, would you prefer us sticking with one combination of TKI and IO or be more fluid saying in this particular scenario, be it more bone mass, I tend to favor this or liver disease or early disease. What is your go-to preferred agent? I think it depends on what you're comfortable with. Ultimately, the most efficacious drug in the patient that you're comfortable managing, that your team has experience with, that's going to be your best chance for success. We've seen multiple times, even in the last year, that treatment dosage matters. And so I think if you're comfortably, because, and I have so much respect, and I, I want to say that here, I love being a subspecialist and treating 
just my GU patients, even in GU, I find it so challenging to keep up with everything. So, so much respect for you all who are having to treat so many different diseases, so many different approvals. And that's why I say be comfortable, have the one that you like and get in that most efficacious drug dose does matter. Starting out at the drug trial started out and then being able to help either do a dose holder or a dose reduction as necessary gives them the best chance.